show. Well, it's actually my mom's cooking show that I have taken over and is now Cook with Jake and Joy. Today, we're gonna to be doing one of my favorite recipes from when I was a kid. My Aunt Janice, who you've seen on previous episodes of Cook with Joy, used to make the best nachos when I was a kid. They were ooey and gooey and sour creamy and guacamole filled, just amazing. So I got so excited when I heard that we <laughs> were gonna be making nachos today. Those are really good points. Your aunt did make great nachos. They were fabulous and they weren't very good for us. <laughs> so here on Cook With Joy, we're gonna talk about how to make those nachos, first of all, more nutritious, much better for you. Number two, how we can make them more simply because back then, Janice like made all the stuff. She made all the salsa, she made all the guacamole. And for the average person, especially for a millennial, I don't know if they're gonna do that. So today on this episode of Cook With Joy, we'll cook with Joy and Jay, cook with Joy and Jake and Derek, cook with us, we are going to make easy, healthy vegan nachos and you're gonna love them. Okay, so let's start out with Can chips. I interrupt and say, I love nachos. <laughs> do you love let's nachos? Let's just make sure that it's very yeah. clear. But you that probably I, like them, like what, how do you like nachos? I like, love it, bed of chips, yeah. melted cheese, and then sprinkled with olives and sour cream and guacamole and all the things. So you put all that stuff on afterwards? afterwards. Is that how you do yeah. it? So you melt the cheese first, uh, of course. and then you put the stuff on? Yeah. How else is this stuff gonna that, stick? That's, yeah, that's, that's an interesting way to do it. Maybe we'll do that today, okay. So interesting. That's something that someone says when they think it's dumb. But they want to be <laughs> no, nice. I don't think it's dumb. That's probably how they do it. I just, I personally have never made nachos because my sister made them all the time and she made them with, she used turkey sausage because back then we thought that that was healthy and then cheddar cheese and sour cream and you know, it's all this stuff that I don't use anymore. I like chips and salsa and I like chips and guacamole. And what I found is that when you go to the grocery store, check this out. There is probably an entire row dedicated to chips and there used to be a couple of different brands that had a baked chip i have checked every grocery store here in santa barbara there is not one grocery store that has a baked chip gone even trader joe's used to have them i could not find one now i've done the best that i could and i've got organic stone ground blue corn tortilla chips with sprouted amaranth quinoa and chia seeds wow now, Derek, I know you tried these. Those are so good. Were they good? You liked them? They're fantastic. Okay, so, so, so they didn't ruin it by being too healthy, but they still have too much fat in them. Now, one way you could get around that is make your own chips, and that would add another step. But I think we might have done that in one of the episodes. You take just simple corn tortillas, cut them into quarters, and then bake, bake them. them. And yeah. it's that that's the healthiest chip that you're going to get. And if you've got the time to do that, I highly recommend doing it. It is, it is really great. But we're talking about simpletons here. We're talking about simpletons. Also, um, I just want to point out that most of the GMO corn in this country can be found in tortilla chips. So you want to make sure that you're getting organic corn chips, organic tortillas, if you're buying corn tortillas. Super important. A lot of people are confused about GMOs. We do not have a ton of GMO crops, but the GMO crops that we do have, and if you're concerned about this, whether you, you know, I am concerned about GMO. I don't want GMO because we don't know what GMO is going to do. It might be fine. It might be fine, but we, it might not be. I'm kind of in that camp. So I don't want GMO. So if it's labeled organic, it is not GMO for sure, for sure, for sure. So if, it, if it's not labeled organic, you have to look and see, is it labeled non-GMO? And that's really important with the crops that are grown um, under, that there are genetically modified organisms um, that they use. So there's corn, there's crookneck squash, and there's papaya, and a couple of others, but people are confused. They think that there's a lot of things. What's interesting is that the largest buyer of potatoes in the United States is McDonald's. And when they tried to introduce GMO potatoes, into the McDonald's lineup, consumers would not go for them. So there are no genetically modified potatoes in the United States, which is, I think, fascinating. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna start with the chips, and I'm gonna grab a parchment-lined uh, cookie sheet. Now, we could use a non-parchment line, and I could spray it with oil, but I've already got oil in the chips, and I don't really wanna have oil in the chips, so we have them anyway. Let's line those up, and at Derek's suggestion, we're gonna put Oh, chip. hold on, hold on. Oh, you gotta have one. Yep. Oh, I don't blame Thank you. you. Okay, Thank you. all right. All right, how many, so Derek, you're a nacho expert. Do you need to have these like spaced a certain way or is it just okay to have a whole pile of them? I believe in the chaos theory of nacho placement. The chaos, the chaos theory, okay. Chaos theory it is. Oh, there's crumbs in there though too. All right, so those are pretty equidistantly spaced. That's important to me. Now we're gonna use this faux cheddar cheese and 
This is a new brand, so delicious. I love their milks, and so I'm assuming we're gonna really like these as well. And we're gonna be pretty liberal in how we put these on. We're gonna get lots and lots and lots of cheese, because that's the part you like, right, Derek? Of course, who doesn't like cheese? Well, this is not real cheese, so I'm gonna be curious to see how you like this. Is there, I've heard that soy cheese doesn't melt that well, is that true? Um, this is supposedly going to melt really, really well. It says right here, mmm, melty. So I'm assuming that it's going to. So with the more M's, does that mean it melts faster I, I or better? I think so. I think that when it has an M in it, it melts better. Mm. Oh, so it's so delicious, not soy delicious. Right, ah. right. But now so delicious does, they make some products with soy and some products without soy. So we'll see. All right, so we're gonna use all of that cheese. That looks this is awesome. like a cheese casserole. Jeez Louise. Okay, now. I think that we should put the meat and the beans on when it goes into the oven. Do you concur or yes, not? Yes, yes. Okay. When you asked me earlier, I rarely ever added meat to my nachos, which really? is weird. Yeah. Really? It's weird. Interesting. My sister always added turkey sausage, but we're going to use my favorite brand, Beyond Meat, and this is their Beyond Beef Crumbles, and they call it Feisty. So it's got a little bit of spice in it, and we're gonna use those, and we're also going to use black beans. Now my sister used refried beans, and she would make them herself, but we're gonna use black beans, and I love that so many companies now are going to these Tetra Packs instead of cans, and I know that there's cans that have the BPA lining, et cetera, et cetera, but I think the Tetra Packs are a healthier way to go. I've already rinsed these, and I've heated them up a little bit, and we're gonna add these to the top. Hold on. We're gonna start with the faux beef. I had to have a little bite of that. That was really good. That Did you looks try like this? real ground beef. I know, isn't that crazy? I love it's this. It's not too thing. spicy though. I can't do spicy. It's not too spicy. Do you wanna try a bite? It's pretty yummy. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, that's delicious. Do you like that? Yeah. I mean, it's really- It's spicy. It's not that spicy. No, it's really feisty. are. feisty. Oh, feisty. Yes, it's feisty. That's what they called it, feisty. I think I should have saved a little bit of the cheese to put over the top of this. I don't know. We're just experimenting. It's all gonna be good. All right, now the beans, and I'm using black beans. Now, once again, I got this recipe from um, Native Foods. It's a chain down in Southern California, and they call for you making all of this stuff, like making your own beans, making your own faux meat, all that stuff, but this is super easy. I mean, seriously, like you could be making this along with me right now, and by the time we're done with this video, you could have your own dish, and I think that that's great. I'm gonna pop this in the oven right now. I'm actually gonna broil it. And while I broil it, I'm gonna chop up a few things that are going, gonna go on top. I have a question. What? What's the difference between baking and broiling? Well, broiling comes from on top. And it's much more, it's a much higher intensity heat. And if you stick something in broil, uh, like, like if you bake something, it's like baking from the inside out. This is cooking from the top down. And if you broiled it for like an hour, like you would bake a bread, you would kill whatever you were cooking. It would be, it would be dust. All right, I'm gonna put this in. Thanks for the question, good question. Okay, well that's broiling, not baking, Derek, broiling. We're gonna chop up a few things. Now these are some green onions. I grow these on my vertical garden. I did not grow these, but I do grow them. We're gonna use cilantro, which I did grow on my vertical garden. If you want more info about that, just let me know. And then we're gonna add guacamole and salsa and I'm gonna, Derek, I'm gonna chop up some jalapenos. You Can you don't put the hollies just them. on your side? Yes, I will put them just on my side. I did also grow this on my vertical garden, so. Just that one? Just, just one, only one, I had one plant. The green onions are gonna add even, I mean, there's just so much nutrition in this, it's unbelievable. We got the black beans for fiber, we've got the guacamole for um, all the goodness that avocados give us, I mean, so much. The salsa for the, all the, the lycopenes that come from the, the tomatoes, I mean, just, this dish is gonna be so good for us. It's not gonna be like my sister's dish, which was delicious, but really not quite so healthful for us. Can you come over to my house during football Sundays and tell everybody the health benefits of eating these nachos? Well, why don't you make them, Derek? I will, do you it's make, simple. Do you make nachos now? I do, you do but I actually use those blue corn tortilla chips. Uh -huh. I really like them. Yeah, I, li I wish you could find them baked. Uh, TJ's used to have them and they do not any longer, but you, you might wanna make this recipe. Give it a try, yeah? Yeah. Can you do that? I think I can, maybe with Jake's help. With Jake, yeah, she can talk you through this. Jake, can you talk him through that? Oh my gosh, Derek, so easy, are you kidding me? You put the chips down on the pan, you got the cheese, you got the faux meat, you got the beans, you throw it in the oven, then you top it with guacamole, salsa, green onion, cilantro, jalapeno, none for you, Derek. <laughs> and then boom, done, so easy, 
super easy. Jake, I just think it's great that you're getting um, Alex to not eat dairy. I know he loves it so much and it's so great that you're giving him some alternatives and that you have a dish. He's probably gonna take it over from you, but now you have a dish, Jake, that you could make for him and you could feel like you're contributing to the cooking experience at your house. We're gonna chop up the cilantro. I mean, do you like the smell of cilantro? I do, I love it so much. When you actually set that thing down while we were eating lunch, it was overwhelming how much it smelled, how good I, it smelled. I love it, but I found out, um, I did that 23andMe thing where they, they do your DNA, mm -hmm. and whether or not you like the smell of cilantro is a genetic trait. Come on. Yes, it's a single gene trait. Isn't that crazy? It's amazing. If you're afraid of heights, it's a single gene trait. Not afraid of heights. I am afraid of heights. Isn't that? So what happens just, if you eat cilantro at the top of a roller coaster? Yeah, I don't know. That like I don't Can know. If I don't, I don't think they're related. I don't think they're related. Okay, and I'm also going to slice up this jalapeno. And Derek, I promise to not get it close to you, but I just love, 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 love. You could put pickled jalapenos on it, but I like fresh jalapenos and the health benefits of a fresh jalapeno over a pickled jalapeno. Say that five times fast. It doesn't seem like you're doing a good job of keeping it away from the rest of the. Oh, the greenery. It's, like it's, not, good. it's, it's touching not, the cilantro. It's touching the cilantro. <laughs> it's going to hurt me. <laughs> it's not going to hurt you, number one. Number two, it's not touching at all. Okay, let's have a look at the nachos. Let's see how they're doing. Okay, so this was an experiment, and I got to taste it to see what I think. It's not super melty. It is not as super melty as I hoped that it would be, but let's give it a try. Let's put some, let's put all the stuff on it, right? And presentation wise, it looks right. It, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Let's, I've made a lot of nachos in my time and that looks pretty good. Really? Now, would you put it on a plate? Cause I would normally put this on a plate after Bo I'd cooked it. Boys don't do that. They just eat it. They don't. The okay. All right. This recipe didn't call for it to like actually go in the oven. So I kind of made this up. Okay, we're gonna just put a little guac. So you just like take out the pan out and like put it on the on the. I like, do exactly what you're doing, and then everyone just takes a big old slop of it and throws it on a plate. Really? Oh, it's great. God, you guys. We don't want them to have extra dishes. Animals. Caveman. Okay, this so is caveman put, food. Put in, yeah. Have well, you seen you those cave drawings well, where they're eating nachos? That's well. <laughs> well, actually, though, you're kind of right that a lot of what we're doing in this episode in this in this series is a lot of caveman food. Do you like the green onions on them? Yes, very much. Okay, and green onions full of quercetin full of antivirals, antibacterials. You know, I've all, <laughs> you don't have to take your penicillin if you no, have. No, don't have to take your penicillin. Okay, so there you have it. I think this is gonna be pretty good. Um, I'm not gonna dress the whole thing because I don't think you can eat this all, but we'll find some people who want to and then we'll dress the rest of it. Wait, did you put the jalapenos on it? I did not. not. Okay. I kept the jalapenos off and we're and good. put jalapenos on mine. Let's, should we give it a try? Yep. Well, this Let's... doesn't have the stuff on it, but I'm just gonna try it. It's it looks hot. really good. It looks perfect. It's a perfect. little hot. It just came out of the broiler and it's kind of super hot. That's pretty yum. The biggest test is if I just go sit on the couch with my feet up and watching football. Yeah, should we do that? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. All right. Hey, thanks for joining us. This is Cook with Joy and now Jake and now Derek and it's just Cook with Us. Season 5. We hope you like this recipe and join us next week when we come up with something else that's delicious and easy for you to make. Nachos.